Hello children, nice to see you all back and we have a poem to do. Huh? We were in the lesson, the model millionaire, okay and the poem that follows is clouds. Have you seen clouds? Because I hope you would have all guessed, the screen you had clouds. So, some of you prompting there, cloud. Children, I welcome all my 8th standard students to this lesson. And this is first language English group. Am I right? Are you all seated? With your pen, book and a textbook in your hand. And if you are ready, we go to the lesson. Children, I have told you, today we are going to read a poem and it is The Cloud, okay, by P.B. Shelley. And children, before we go to the poem, have you seen clouds in the sky? You have seen various types of clouds. Have you noticed it? Some clouds are as you see on the screen. You call it as nimbus cloud. Oh, they are all named is it? Yes, they have different names. Nimbus cloud, cumulus cloud, see that is how it looks and stratus cloud. We all have seen clouds, but we did not know that there are different types of clouds also. We would notice the clouds vary shape, sizes, etc. And these are not only the three. Here goes the bigger picture. Look at that. There are types of clouds and you find it on certain heights. Below you see that the clouds listed there, the four types of clouds with the picture listed there, you find it at the level of 6,500 feet children and higher to that up to 20,000 feet you find another set of clouds. Are you reading it? Altocumulus, Ferret, Altostratus, Cumulonimbus. Children and higher than that about 20 feet, 20,000 feet, about 20,000 feet and 42,500 feet, you find another set of clouds. Cyrus, can you see that? Cyrostratus. Ah, so children, these are the different types of clouds. Now, coming to a poem for the day, I told you it is the cloud, and who is written that? P.B. Shelley. This is how he looks. Correct. The picture here portrayed. It looks as though it is a girl, but this is a boy. What is the name? Percy Beige Shelley. His full name is Percy Beige Shelley. And children, he was born on 4th of August 1792 in England. And when did he die? 8th of July 1822 in Italy. And children, his education was, he studied at the University of Oxford and what are his poems? To a Skylark and A Day to the West Wind, later Queen, Map and children, many more to go and here are the pictures. Okay, these are a few of his poems. Children, did he get any awards? In India we see Jnana Pita Award, huh? we have highest awards, Nobel Prizes, but did P.B. Shelley get any award? No, he did not get any award. Why? He died at a very young age when he was 30 years. It is said that he drowned, okay, in a lake. Children, and we have a award in his name. What is that? The Shelley Memorial Award of the Poetry Society of America. It is named after this poet P.B. Shelley. We go to the poem. But before we read the poem, I want you all to listen to a story, a short story, which is very interesting. Shall we all listen? Here it goes. Clouds to the Rescue One early morning, when the animals of lush meadows were just getting ready for the day, Two woodcutters stealthily made their way through the forest. 
Mike the rabbit was first to spot them. Look, those two humans with axes are eyeing our trees. He alerted his friends. Woodcutters, they must have come to cut down the trees in our forest. Our homes will be destroyed. What do we do? asked Bella the squirrel. Let's ask King Leo the lion. He's sure to have some idea, said Tina the rabbit. And so Mike, Tina and Bella, along with Ellie the elephant and Minnie the bird, set off for King Leo's cave. Sir, we are in trouble. Please help us. Tina called out from outside King Leo's cave. What's the matter? asked King Leo, coming out. All of you look so worried. If you have come to me so early in the morning, it must be something serious. Sir, two woodcutters have entered our forest. They are eyeing the trees that have borne most fruits. We have built our nests in those trees. If they cut those trees, we will be homeless. You must help us, said Minnie worried. It is indeed a serious matter. Let's ask Neil the Cloud and his friends for help, said King Leo. The animals brighted up at the idea. Neil surely had the power to help them, they thought. They immediately reached out to him. Neil, can you help us? Two woodcutters have entered the forest. If they cut our trees, we will be homeless, said Ellie. Look, who's here? said Neil, amused. Only the other day, one of you were making fun of our sheep, And now you want our help. Sorry, but we don't want to help you. Neil's friends nodded in agreement. Please forgive us. We are sorry. We shouldn't have made fun of you, said the animals, feeling bad for making fun of the clouds. Seeing Neil and his friends unresponsive, the animals began to walk back, worried about their homes. Wait, friends, they heard Neil call out to them. This forest belongs to us as well. While I was angry that you made fun of my friends and me, we cannot turn our backs on you who are in trouble. So tell us, how can we help you? asked Neil. Thank you for not deserting us in our time of need, Neil. Please make it rain so heavily that the woodcutters get frightened and are forced to leave the forest, requested Bella. Don't worry, I will take care of it, said Neil. He and his friends moved swiftly to drink up as much water as they could from the lake until they became dark and heavy. They then floated over to where the woodcutters were and drained over them heavily, followed by thunder and lightning. What's this? How is it raining at this time of the year? The woodcutters were taken by surprise. We won't be able to go back to our village in this rain. Let's take shelter under this tree for the time being, said one woodcutter to the other. They sat under the tree for a long time. They plucked a few fruits from the tree and started eating them. Imagine what would have happened if this tree was not there to give us protection from the rain? We would have got drenched and fallen sick, said the first woodcutter. You are right, my friend. We had come to cut down these trees. But those same trees have protected us. They also provide us with oxygen to breathe and fresh fruits to eat. We have learned a lesson today. If you cut the branch you are sitting on, it is you who is going to fall down, said the other. Anyway, it has stopped raining. Come, let's go back home.
the two woodcutters left lush meadows and started walking towards the village. All the animals of the forest came out in the open and started celebrating. They thanked the clouds who had helped save their precious forest. They apologized to Neil and his friends for making fun of them earlier. We must remember something. There is nothing shameful about accepting one's mistake and apologizing. And there is nothing better than forgiving those who repent their mistake and giving them a second chance, said King Leo, addressing everyone. Hey children, did you listen to the story? Enjoyed it? Yes, it gives us a lesson to learn. You should forgive, right? You should be of help to others. You should not have a grudge. Okay, and you should have that mind to forgive and to help others when they are in need. Enjoy the story? Okay, children. Now, before reading the poem, I want you all to have a look at this new words. Here it goes, stream. What is a stream? It's a small narrow river. Kannadadalen heltivi? Honalu. Honalu. This is how it looks, children. Have you seen it? We should have come across that, right? And you have a sentence here. We waded across a shallow stream. Look at this boys. They are trying to wade. What do you mean by wade? Cross where they will sometimes swim or sometimes walk if it is not too deep. Okay? Stream and reino honalo. The next word is dew. No, did it dew na? How the dew drops in the head to be, right? It is a tiny drop of moisture that is formed on cold surfaces. Samanya night times in North Tibet. How the this is how it looks. Look at the dew drop there. It's falling down. Huh? Kannada the lane healthy with na ibbani honey galo. And dew drops sparkled in the morning sunlight. Can you find the dew drop there? The small one? Yes, that is dew drop. Next one is rocked. Rocked and we know. It's a, a stone thing, right? But illi rocked and you know, in this context, this is what is called rocked. It means moving regularly, back and front. Okay, from side to side, children. You have found this rocking chairs, right? And kanar dalen healthy vadana? Woladi so okay this is how it looks always a word will have different meaning according to the context it is used okay have that in mind children and the next one is flail what is flail huh look at this picture here my friends nivela halli kade irodadre nee idana nodi irthira nodi idira idana ha adra artha enu anta first let us have a look at that it is a wooden tool consisting of a stick okay there are two sticks here one will be swinging okay from the end of the long handle ah kannada dal en heltivi makle tene badiyuva holo nodidira yes holugalalli use martare once the crop is ripe okay to separate the grain they use this flail okay this was used for threshing grains children Go to the next one, lashing hail. And eagle hail is in I have told you. We see hailstones and the hail is in. Is it not? Huh, what is lashing hail then? The below rabasa. Okay, this is how it is. Small stones of ice hitting with hose. Hmm, this is how it looks. And kanar dalin hail tiva dana? Ali kallu. Ali kal male. Heli divala, keli diva also. Fine. This is called as. Ali kallu, hailstones, lashing hail andre, the force, it hits the ground, the hailstones hit the ground. Next one is pavilion. We would have heard uh, in a sports go go dadre, we listen to this, children sit in the pavilion and the hailthir, right? Your PT teachers would have used the word. What does pavilion mean? A pavilion is a large temporary structure, temporary, have that in mind. 
such as a tent which is used at outdoor public events. Sometimes it may be temporary children, but sometimes school will not have pavilion cut is there, right? Where children have their lunch there, they sit there for group studies, okay? They sit for having a look at the events that's happening in the ground. This is a pavilion, right? Kannar dalen heltive dodda hajara, okay? And the next one is cenotaph. What is a cenotaph? It's a monument built to honor soldiers who are killed during wars. Children, this is how it looks. smaraka. Okay, now Maclean. Next is cavern. Cavern, it looks an unfamiliar word. How the Andre, cavern, Andre, it's a large cave. Cave andre eno kannada dali guhe. Nodi dira chitra dali guhe. And a sentence to help you. We shone our torches around the cavern to see what was inside. So cavern ali torch hakti ve ke. There are no lights. The sunlight also does not enter. So you need a torch to see what is inside. So what is cavern? Cavern means it's a large cave. Children. With this new words, let us read the poem and you all will open page number 117. Poem number 16, The Cloud by P.P. Shelley. Have you opened your text? And here it goes children. I bring fresh showers for the thirsting flask from the seas and the streams. I bear light shade for the leaves when laid in their noonday dreams. You know, Artha, I and Rayari lay. Who's I here? I bring fresh shas and other. Shas and Ridu, Malay. Okay. I and Rayaro, Malay Surustarado. Good. We are talking about the clouds. So, what is the cloud doing? Yes. It is showering. It is raining on the thirsty flask. Thirsty and the flask thirsty, Ritha. Have you seen a flower telling I am feeling very thirsty, I want to drink water? No. So these are the imageries used by the poet. There are imageries used in this poem as well. And here, I bring fresh showers for the thirsting flowers. Look at the sentence. I antandre cloud. It is telling that it is bringing fresh showers, the rain, for the thirsty flowers antandre, the flowers which were dry due to the hot sun. And something to do with poetry devices also, right? We will have a look at that later. Let us understand the poem first. And from the sea and the stream, so where does it bring this fresh shafts from? It brings the fresh shafts from the sea and the stream. Good. Science of Kelidira, evaporation. How does it happen? When there is sun. Okay. When the heat of the sun is more, what happens? The water gets evaporated. It, is it not? It gets evaporated. Then it forms into clouds. The clouds are carried away. It goes up. You have seen the different levels of the clouds as well. Right. Later, when they become huge and too heavy, what happens? You see them as rains. Right. Look at the next one. From my wings are shaken the dews that waken. The sweet buds every one. When dropped to rest on their mother's breast as she dances about the sun. What does it mean, children? Ah, that poet tells that the cloud has other activities other than raining. Other than raining. What does it say? See on the uh, on the mountain top. On the mountain top, you can see the cloud. See how it looks. It looks as though a pavilion is formed. Right, it looks like a pavilion, a shelter, right, and looks very beautiful. So, I form a pillow, okay, which sleeps in the arms of the storm. Huh. And the next one, children, I read it now. I veil the fail of the lashing hail and whiten the green plains under, and then again I dissolve within rain and laugh as I pass in thunder. And the next one. I am the daughter of earth and water and the nursling of the sky. 
I pass through the pores of the ocean and shores. I change, but I cannot die. Listen, children. Look at the cloud. What is it telling? That it is the daughter, daughter of earth and water, it seems. Okay. I am the daughter of both earth and also water. Right. And I am a nursling to the sky. What does nursling mean? An infant. I am an infant to the sky. The, st uh, the sky is so vast. The sky is so vast. And I am a nursling. I am an infant to the sky. I am also a daughter to the earth and water. Is it not? And children, I don't die. I am immortal. Why does the cloud say it is immortal? How do you say it? Okay? After it rains, you find that the clouds are again formed. The sky is clear, no doubt. After it rains, the sky is clear. But still, you find the clouds. How did that happen? It means to say the clouds has, has no death. The cloud has no death. It does not die. Okay? It again collects water. Look at the next one, children. And after the rain, when with never a stain, the pavilion of heaven is bare, and the winds and sunbeams with the convicts gleams. Let's understand up till here. What happens, children? After the heavy rains, when there is the sunshine, you find the rainbow. The convex gleams. Build up the blue doom of air. I silently laugh at my own cenotaphs. And out of the caverns of rain, like a child from the womb, like a ghost from the tomb, I erase and unbuild it again. Who is it here? The cloud again. What does he do? After the rain, the sky becomes clear, is it not? And the cloud laughs now. I was dead. I had almost vanished after the rain. Okay, it's like it is telling, I laugh at my own cenotaph. Cenotaph and the gotti de nimge, smarakanta helidim, is it not? Ah, I die and again I come to life. I am like a child emerging from the womb. Okay, which raises once again, it builds in the blue doom of the air, right? So I build again and I form a cloud, okay? And this is how the cloud says that it is immortal. Did you follow? Nice to read about the cloud, right? And children, and the summary very shortly here for you. The poet P.B. Shelley personifies the cloud very beautifully. Clouds are gift of nature. Cloud never dies and hence it is immortal. They form overseas and gradually transform into raindrops or hailstones depending on the nature of winds. The poet here pictures the cloud as speaking, is it not? All the way the cloud was speaking. It is spoken of as the daughter of the earth and water. It is also described as the brushing of the sky. Okay, she brings the first shower to the flower waiting in summer and also brings light shade for the leaves. The sweet buds are woken up by the dew shard upon them. The hailstones whiten the plains and dissolves into rain. Okay, and again what does it do from the earth's crust? Okay, from the pores it forms into a cloud again. I do not die. Okay, and it is a continuous process. Children, if you have understood the summary of the lesson, have you? Children, I told you. While I was going through the poem, I said there are poetic devices also. I meant to say there are figures of speech. What are figures of speech, children? Here it goes. The figure of speech, you have a list here. Simile, metaphor, alliteration, personification, synecdoche, and you have metonymy. And have you come across this? You would have come across simile and metaphor, right? And today, we will have a look at the next figure of speech. But before that, I posed a question earlier. What are figures of speech? It is a figurative language used by the poet huh? to make it more meaningful 
colorful, right? Look at one of the example here. The moon was resting in the midnight sky. Look, the moon is resting. Okay, look at the next one. The leaves danced their way through the lawn. Look at the leaves dancing. Have you seen it? Okay, next one. The wind whistled throughout the day. Whistle. Have you heard the wind whistling? You have heard the boys whistling, right? Look at the next one. The flame of the candle danced in the dark. Hmm, the flame is dancing. And here, the slices of bread jumped out of the toaster suddenly, scaring me. Oh my God. Children, what are all this? Yes, they are all called as personification. One of the figure of speech is personification. What is personification then? You give human qualities, okay, human characteristic to an object, animal or an idea. And that is personification. You saw the bread, they are jumping and it says that bread, have you seen a bread jumping? See that is how it is described. You are, you are giving human qualities to object, animals or idea. And children, some of the examples in the poem are, I bring fresh showers for the thirsting flowers. I told you. Next, I am the daughter of earth and water. I silently laugh at my own cenotaph. These are some of the examples of personification that you find in the poem. Your work is, you will list out the rest. Hmm? You will list out the rest of the literary device that is used in the poem. Children, we will go to the assignment. You have a set of questions. You have to answer the following questions, okay, in your notebooks. Read the question and answer it. Okay, children. And the next one. Lastly, you will also write the summary of the poem. And children, I am very happy that you have understood the poem as well. Okay. And this poem is for memorization. You all will memorize the poem. Hmm? Take two or three readings, understand and then memorize. It carries marks. Children with this, I complete the class. Thank you all for listening. Please work on your assignments and read. Best of luck. And this is Anthony Mary signing off for today. Thank you children.